Before we go deeper into another polygon modeling approach, I'd like to cover another approach, which is called volume modeling. And going with the volume modeling, we also have to talk a little bit about remeshing. Um, and let's actually start with remeshing and discover a few things about how we can use the remesh tool inside of Cinema 4D to create optimized um, versions of our objects, basically. So we jump into Cinema 4D and I think from one of the earlier sessions, you might remember this kind of uh, problem where we wanted to cut out um, yes, a specific part of this cylinder from the cube and we would use the bool generator for this, um, drop in the cube, drop in the cylinder and get this kind of um, effect. And this is fine for as long as we want to keep our objects here very simple. So, and, and don't use any edge beveling, etc. So if I want to uh, I would have made this to a polygon object and then maybe merged those two even together into one object by using connect and delete. Um, we have this kind of this kind of object. And now if I want to to bevel things here, um, you have to maybe use the optimize for a second here. Uh, optimize to connect those two things together. Um, you, th you, you might run into the problem that this is actually hard to, as you can see, I, I can't even select the kind of things I, I want to select in order to get a nice beveling of the edges here in because th this is a bit messed up. So uh, let's go back here a little bit, a few steps. And let's say we still keep this as a bool object and we want to bevel the edges. So, well, then let's try with the bevel deformer, put this into um, a group. Uh, let's make sure this is to a single object and then we go with the beveling and as you can see we get those kind of artifacts in here. It doesn't look nice. Uh, it, it doesn't get better if we increase the amount of the, the offset of the beveling. It's, it's just uh, messed up. And now when as soon as I have this great single object uh, activated we can make this editable again and Let's see if the selection works now a little bit better, but uh, no, it's still kind of messed up. So we, we could go there by hand, select this um, and then try to bevel it. And yeah, it's it will be messy. So there are a few things we, we can do. We can, of course, um, increase the amount of segments in our object to make the bevel, uh, the, the bool operation maybe a little bit nicer and cleaner, but it's it will always be kind of a mess with the geometry you get from the from the bool. So in, in those kind of scenarios, what we can do is we can use a tool to kind of remesh the results we get here. And with the remeshed option, we might get a cleaner version of our object, which we then can use to apply the bevel deformer on, or even go from there and uh, do our own bevelings in the polygon mode. So you find the remesh uh, also under the degenerators here. Uh, it's down here, it's called remesh and the remesher will, as the name suggests, recalculate the mesh for this object. So let's activate the grout shading lines for this. Um, and as soon as I deactivate this, you can see uh, how the mesh looks like. And one of the problems is that those edges, for example, from our cylinder here, uh, don't have a connecting edge going to the cube. And it's very hard to set this up. So I, it's very hard to find a setting where actually the cylinder will perfectly line up with the segments of our um, cube. So this would be like a guessing game and we don't want to spend time on this. So we can use the remesh tool and it will kind of find the right connections to connect those two objects together. Now, at the moment, the mesh density, if we go to the settings of the remesh, is set to 100%. Um, and because we have very few segments in our cylinder, in our cube down here, um, this is not much information the remesh tool can work with. But you can actually increase this to something very high, like 5,000% um, for example. 
And as soon as you do this, you can kind of see how the mesh is optimized. And maybe let's increase the amount of uh, rotational segments here to get a nice rotational, uh, clean rotation of the cylinder here. Um, as you can see, now we have a lot of geometry in there, but we get the cleaner result. Um, and now if I would drop in the bevel deformer, I think it should actually work a bit better with the beveling. So let's increase the offset, let's increase the amount of subdivisions. And now the only thing which kind of messed up is the Fong shading. Um, so let me just drag the Fong tag from one of our objects up to the remesh. And then as you can see, we have a nice object. And the sweet thing is now we can actually still kind of move things around. It may break at some point, but it's much more parametric and workable as with a, um, as if we would make this into a polygon object. Um, so we can yeah change a lot of things and make this look nice still. So the only downside is with this kind of approach, you might get a lot of polygons, but what you can actually try then is to use another remesh um, and to reduce it again a little bit. Um, so let's say, I don't know, 10%. You might lose some details, but as you can see, it still kind of works out more or less. So this way you can go from basically calculating or telling the remesh to use a high mesh density to kind of get a smooth shape. And then we can use it again, actually, to make it more, more or less uh, low poly again. Okay, so this is the thing with the remesh so that's quite neat and let me hide this and let me introduce to another tool which is called the volume builder and the volume builder um, basically instead of working with a mesh it works with a volume and you can imagine it's something like uh, it's working with voxels basically so something like the minecraft world is built out of voxels so it's basically a 3d pixel and we can do pretty much the same thing with this. Uh, so let me rebuild this kind of scenario here a little bit. Um, drop in the cube, drop in the cylinder. And as you can see, we get this kind of pixel overview. And the, the thing is now this kind of pixelated looking thing are actually 3D pixels. When we go to the volume builder, you can see the voxel size is at 10 centimeters. So we can decrease this a little bit to get a kind of finer resolution here um, if you go too low you will get a warning and you will somewhat 4d will tell you uh, that the calculating this kind of voxel size is too much um, so now let's put that on top and let's say subtract or maybe you have to turn it the other way around yeah something like this so now we get the same kind of effect we did before but we are now still in this kind of a voxel mode. And what we can do now is we can tell Cinema 4D to make a mesh out of this kind of voxel thing. And we use the volume measure for this and then drop the volume builder inside of this. I think we have to increase the rotation segments here again. We, you can get go quite high on this ones because the, the volume um, measure is quite efficient in calculating with this kind of thing. Now, let me turn on the grout shading lines and then you will see this will result in a very high density mesh. And what we can also do is we can kind of smooth things out. So I can introduce this kind of smoothing tool, uh, change the strength a little bit and therefore get the kind of rounding we like in our object. And as you can see, we can kind of get the the same result with this kind of tool. Um, so what would be the the upside or downside? It, the upside is you can build more complex shapes with this kind of tool. Uh, you can combine a little bit more things. You can make more organic shapes and then use the volume measure to kind of make this into one object again. And then again, you can use the remesh tool, throw this in and uh, yeah, use the remesh to kind of create a lower 
density version of this. So of course I have to decrease the mesh density amount then um, takes a moment to calculate and then we get a nicer re resolution model out of this. Uh, it also gets rid of some of the artifacts maybe in the object and um, yeah so both ways with the bool and with the volume measure basically the same thing um, but with the volume measure you might be able to succeed in some ways where you get to your limits with the bool object. So just to keep that in mind, if you want to model something very organic or complex, uh, the volume mesh might be um, a good way, good way to go. All right, this is just um, yeah wraps up the topics about modeling, um, or not not completely because now in the, in the next chapter we will have a look at the more complex um, like professional kind of modeling tool, which is called subdivision surface modeling.